Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're having a look at the Siemens Pocket Reader, an offline scanner with optical character recognition. It was released in June 1998 and allows you to copy large chunks of text and then transfer them to a computer. While we wouldn't think twice about taking a photograph of text, scanning text using our smartphone or even converting it to speech via an app, Back in 1998, this was just a pipe dream, with most budget digital cameras having VGA resolution or less, and a lot of the top-end consumer cameras costing $400 plus would only produce 1 or 1.2 megapixels. Scanning a document at this resolution leaves it pretty illegible, as demonstrated by the VGA resolution photo I took on my cheesy snap. I bought this in 2001 or 2, and at the time it was quite a good camera. So let's take a look at the box. So on the front it proudly proclaims it's the world's first offline text reader. I'm not aware of any other portable text readers. If you are, pop a comment below. On the bottom we've got a nice picture and a barcode. On the top we've got a little bit of information. So it holds 20 A4 pages, reads in five languages, connects to your PC and is compatible with Windows 95 through NT4. And then on the back We've got a little bit more information about it, including its dimensions. So it's pretty small and it doesn't weigh a lot. So if we take the sleeve off, then actually the rest of the packaging is in German. So I'm not sure if this is unusual or whether they just made German packaging and put a different sleeve on it. According to Google Translate, this translates as they have experienced it, which is an odd tagline. The rest of the box, as you can see, is also in German, um, but it appears to contain exactly the same information that we had on the sleeve. Leave. So let's have a look inside. As we open it up we've got a little bit more information. Again I think this is a repeat of what's on the back of the sleeve. Opening it up we have the instruction manual and the instruction manual thankfully is in English. So I'll just quickly flick through these and of course you can pause it if you wish to see what it says. A little bit about the angle to hold the pen at. Editing text on the go, configuring the pen, how to use the program on the PC, and some safety instructions, and then at the back some technical data. Also in the box we've got this nice bit of cardboard packaging, so we've got a floppy disk which is the software itself, we've got a jack to serial connector, and then under here, we've got the reader itself. We've also got this nice ruler which is to assist you in getting a straight line in your early days of using it. And it helpfully says, a little help to get it. And then this is the reader itself. So it's quite small, certainly light and easy enough to carry around. So let's take a look at that. Looking at the pen itself, it's quite straightforward. We've got an LCD display. We've got six buttons, enter, a menu button or function button, perhaps that's why it's an F, some arrow keys, delete button and the power button. On the top, there's nothing. On this end, we've got a jack to connect to the PC. On the back, we've got the battery compartment and a few screws keep it together. Nothing on the bottom. And on this end, we've got the optical reader and a guide wheel. The guide wheel acts as a switch, so when it gets pressed in, it knows to turn the sensor on. And when it's let go, it turns it off. So let's power it on. Switching it on for the first time, it displays a battery meter and how much memory there is left. And then we get this helpful message. So in this mode you can use the arrow key to scroll back through text, holding will run through, double tapping will go to the last line break, like so. Double tapping again goes to the next one and here we are at the beginning. This text effectively reiterates what's in the manual and on the box. I'll just show you the setup menu and then we'll do some scanning. So pressing and holding F brings up the menu, like so. We've got various options, text language, menu language, erase all data and exit menu. So there's not a huge amount of options. If we select the menu language, pressing enter gives us the various options. If we wanted it in French, pressing enter 
changes the menu to French and kicks you back out to the beginning of the setup sequence. Pressing and holding F, we can now see that the menu is in French. So if you're scanning French or German or any languages which have accents, it's important that it is set up correctly. I'm going to return it back to English as that's my native language. And finally, we're going to erase all data. And that's done. So let's see what it's like to scan. So this is the first page of Youth by Isaac Asimov. I've not read it yet, so I can't give you a review, but when I have, I'll add it to the comments below. So scanning itself is very easy. Simply turn it on. Battery's good, text memory's empty. So once you're ready, hold the pen fairly vertical, make sure the red light is on and scroll across the page. As you can see, the line you've just read pops up like so. So at this point, you've got a couple of options. You can simply scan the next line or you can use this button to add an enter. Equally, if you wanted to put an enter earlier on, you can scroll across using the arrow button and then add it. This allows you to separate lines. Let's scan a bit more. So now we've scanned that page, we need to transfer it to a computer. If you are enjoying this video, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can follow my next video. So we need a computer with a floppy drive, although I will put a link to the software below. I'm using the Libretto 50CT. Let's pop it in and see if it works. While I'm here, I'm just going to copy all the files from the floppy disk so that I can try it on Windows XP and 10. So I've already connected the peripheral hub and I've connected the serial cable to the back of the libretto. So to connect it up, we need to first of all plug the jack into the pen reader, turn it on, and then we need to start the software program. The first time you start the program, you need to tell it which COM port you're using. So you do this by going to Tools, Configuration. You also need to set the correct language. Once that's done, hit OK and it should connect and transfer. Although serial connections are generally quite slow, the speed of transfer is a lot slower than I would have expected for a simple text file. However, watching the words write themselves on the screen is strangely therapeutic. As I'm sure you'll agree. And that's done. So in the software itself, there's quite a few options. So under file, we can create new, open a previous one and of course save and print. We've got all the usual edit options and we can choose word wrap or not, tab spacing, etc. If you hit read text, it'll start reading it again. We can of course erase the memory from the reader itself and we can cancel the transfer in this menu. Tools, we've got the PC configuration, which we've already had a quick look at. So you can choose the COM port and board rates, whether you want it to immediately transfer and whether you want it to automatically erase anything on the reader. You can also set a previous file attribute and you can choose a folder for which to save things in. Under text representation, you can see it tells you the different fonts and it'll also show you whether or not it was a good scan or not. Let's pop that on and see what it thinks. So as you can see with the uh, color scheme on, we can see which bits it's unsure about. This could be useful for later editing, as you can tell exactly which bits it thought it was struggling with. Under tools, you can also reconfigure your pocket reader. So you can see the ROM version, how much memory you've taken up, and the current language settings. So under the save options, you can see it'll normally save it as rich text format, although you can choose standard text, and the default folder is in the PR reader. You can also use standard shortcut keys to select all, copy, and then add to a pre-existing document. 
as you can see, it maintained the colors as I pasted it in, which could be useful for editing. And of course, then in Word, you can simply select all and change the colors back to default. So here's the original document and here's the scanned version. So you can see not everything's perfect. For example, we've got a dollar sign instead of an S, but in terms of storing the information, it's quite convenient. According to the transfer software, this page of text only took up 1% of the storage memory. So 20A4 pages is obviously 20A4 pages in a very small font. And there's no question about it. It's very easy to use. Sadly, no matter what I've tried to do, including installing with compatibility for Windows NT and Windows 95, I've been unable to get it to connect to Windows XP. It wouldn't even consider installing on an Atom processor because it's a 16-bit piece of software and Windows 10 just spat it out. So it looks like we're stuck with Windows 95, 98 and NT4. A great many thanks goes to my fiance who bought the pocket reader for me for Christmas. It would make a great partner for a Scion 5 as the two devices are compatible and with the optional lead, it's possible to connect directly to the Scion. Sadly, I haven't got an appropriate connector, otherwise I would love to have shown you how it works. One of the great things about this reader is that it actually uses flash memory. This means that if the batteries go flat, you don't use any of the text that you've already scanned. I'm surprised that they actually opted for flash memory as at the time, Flash was incredibly expensive. Sadly, it only stores one continuous text file. It's not possible, for example, to have one text file for one thing and another for a different project. It's a minor thing, but it would have been a nice touch. The serial interface works very well, but I think for the time, an infrared transmitter would have made a lot of sense. The reader could have simply compiled it as a .txt file and beamed it to any appropriate devices. This would have meant it was compatible not just with Scion, but also with Palms and Pocket PCs from the period, as well as simply being able to beam text files to your laptop, assuming you had an infrared port. As a student, this would have been very useful for one of my many trips to the library. I couldn't find how expensive they were new, but I imagine they were more than I could afford as a student. Sadly, these days, I think this is a little bit redundant, with a lot of documents simply available online for copying and pasting, camera quality and AI tools for scanning documents using your smartphone. Combine that with a complete incompatibility with any modern operating systems, and it certainly seems a little redundant. It definitely filled a much needed niche at the time and is certainly an interesting gadget. Perhaps you used to use one of these or perhaps you still do. If that's the case, I would love to hear from you, especially if you know some way of getting it to work with a modern operating system. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, my name is Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.